Well, greetings everybody. A real quick update on the Feast of Pentecost. Welcome to our King's channel. And I actually cut this part out of the part 4 video I brought on the 666 series. But I do want to show you here in March 2021, the new moon was on the 13th of March. The 27th of March, which was also a Sabbath and the very first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Passover being on the 26th, from the 25th of sundown to the 26th of sundown. And from the 26th of sundown to the 27th of sundown was the first day of the feast. It was also the Sabbath during the Feast of Unleavened Bread and on the morrow after, which was here on March 28th, was the day that our King in heaven brought forth the wave offerings and all the sacrifices and everything for us. And I'll show you here in Scripture shortly where this is the day that we start the count for 50 days to bring us to Pentecost. So from the 28th, it would have been the first day, the 29th would be the second, 30th is the third, 31st is the fourth, and the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh day would be a regular Sabbath, the third of April. And we'll get into that to show you the count. But here in Leviticus chapter 23, starting verse 15, up here you can see it says that this is for the Feast of Weeks. It says, and you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, which again, this was the Sabbath, the 27th of March, that was the first day of the feast as well. And the day after the Sabbath would be the 28th of March, as it's speaking here. You shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, you're to count seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Now, if you're keeping a lunar Sabbath, you're not going to come up with this calculation, which should prove you're wrong. Please stop doing those stupid things, creating your own rituals and things of this sort. All you have to do is keep the Ten Commandments by keeping the give or take 613 laws that apply to you. That's how you keep the Ten Commandments. That's all there is to salvation. You don't have to invent new religions or anything of that sort by these silly little lunar Sabbaths. There's no way you can count seven lunar Sabbaths. And then, as it shows here in Leviticus 23, 16, it says, count 50 days. You're to count 50 days. For what or how? to the day after the seventh Sabbath. So if you start counting right here as it tells you to do, on March 28th, you start counting here. This is day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go up here to April. So here you see on April 3rd, 2021, is the seventh day in this count. So this is the first Sabbath. The 10th was the second Sabbath. The 17th was the third Sabbath. Right now we are on the fourth Sabbath. Four times seven is 28. We're, we are 28 days into the count to Pentecost in the way that you count it. Like it shows here, it says count 50 days. Right now it is the 28th day. We're a little over halfway getting to the day of Pentecost. But we're on the 28th day, right here on the 24th. Let's go to May. Now remember the 24th of April was the 4th Sabbath. Here, May 1st will be the 5th. May 8th will be the 6th. May 15th will be the 7th Sabbath. The 7th, 7th day Sabbath. And on the morrow after that will be the 50th day the 16th of May, on a Sunday, Pentecost always falls on the first day or a Sunday. If you want to call it Sunday, or if you insist on calling it a first day, well, that's fine. You can call it the 50th day. As you counted through, 15th of May will be the 49th day. Seven seventh day Sabbaths equals 49 days so as it shows here it's not complicated but they created a brand new religion to battle my controversy with keeping that 
abomination of the lunar Sabbath, and I showed these people, it's like, look, there's no way you can come up with 49 days using your lunar Sabbaths. There's no way you can do this. You're going to come out with, you know, maybe 40 six or 55 or something of that sort, but you're not going to come up with counting the way scripture tells you to count. It says count 50 days to the day after. Count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. So as we showed here, on the 15th of May is the seventh Sabbath. It's the 49th day in the count. It's the seventh Sabbath, okay? So you've got the seventh Sabbath. It's a 49th day in the count to Pentecost. And it says to count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Father and bring loaves and all this stuff, lambs and everything. Our king is going to take care of that for us. But the important thing is for the counting. The whole world, for the most part, is off in the count because they have worshipped the moon and used a crescent instead of actually starting their count with the new moon itself, as our Heavenly Father commands us to do. So I wouldn't be surprised if some sort of calamity comes up on the 16th of May, you know. And I'm no prophet, you know, nothing of that sort, you know, I just feel that because the whole world is off, I know the gathering is going to come soon. And of course, that's my own opinion based on, you know, scripture and study of many years. I do believe we're getting close. It says, this last generation will not pass away until all the prophecies concerning the coming, the second coming of our king are fulfilled and I'm getting pretty old here, you know, pretty wore down. So I do believe that the gathering is going to be before too awful long. And it'll catch the whole world off guard, at least all those that pretend to be keeping our Heavenly Father's feast when he commands us to do. Because they're going to be a week off or even more. Some didn't keep it in the right month, you know, the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They kept it in their own month, you know, or whenever they did. If they used the crescent, they kept their own feast. Amos said he hates, our father hates their feast. He hates the noise of their songs, even when they're singing, you know, uh, Kumbaya, you know, <laughs> whatever they're singing on the during the feast there, you know, it's not just the jingle bells, jingle bells, and here comes Peter Cottontail running down his cotton trail or whatever. But it's also speaking of these songs sang to the Lord and El and Adonai and all these other nasty abominations that our Heavenly Father truly hates. And yet, most of the world wants to call him by the names of their gods as well and think that he's going to tolerate it. Well, our father is long-suffering. And that's the reason why he gave us his son. The same son that sent Holy Spirit to the disciples as well as people that were standing in the parking lot because they wanted to partake. But some of them were even uncircumcised. And yet, Holy Spirit did fall upon them. Now, if they wanted to keep the next Passover, they'd have had to got the weenie whack. But, people that haven't made that decision yet can still acquire Holy Spirit. That's the point there. This is what you do. Count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. I mean, that is plain English. And yet the lunatic Sabbath keepers, what they did after I showed them this is they said, oh no, what it says here is that when you get to the seventh Sabbath, then you are to count off 50 days. You get to the seventh Sabbath because there's no way that a lunatic Sabbath keeper can bring forth seven Sabbaths of the lunatic variety and come up with 49 days. So that on the day after that seventh Sabbath would be the 50th day. And they knew that. So what they did was they twisted the scripture a little more so that they could feel secure in their disobedience. And they started saying, no, what you do is you count off seventh lunatic Sabbaths. And then the day after you count 50 days more. 
And that's when you keep Pentecost. Which brings you pretty close to the Feast of Tabernacles, you know? The Feast of Trumpets. And it's all insanity. So, again, please do check my figures. The 15th of May should be the 7th Sabbath in the count from the 7th day Sabbath that is within the Feast of Unleavened Bread on the morrow after is when the wave offerings and such were to be brought and you were to start counting 50 days, which will be the day after the 7th Sabbath from the day you brought the wave offering, or I should say from the day our king took care of the wave offering for us. So I hope that helps everybody. Please don't be one of those lunatic Sabbath keepers. There's no scriptural basis for those things. These new religions that people like to bring up, you know, and, you know, well, all you got to do to get salvation is put a pen on your hand and jump up and down three times on your right foot and then put it on your other hand and jump up and down three times on your left foot and you make the kingdom. Well, they don't realize not everybody's got legs, you know. <laughs> and our king warned about those sorts of people. So please, let's not make a religion. Just keep the Ten Commandments by keeping the give or take 613 laws that apply to you. And this is a few of the laws right here concerning the feast that do apply to you. And on the 15th of May will be the seventh Sabbath of the count that started at the new moon, the month of Abib, the 13th of March. The 27th of March was the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The 28th, and it was also a Sabbath day. See, there's two other Sabbath days in a Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Feast of Tabernacles. You have the first day and the last day that are Sabbath days. And when our Father said here in Leviticus 23, 15, and you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, from the day you brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be completed. So it's not speaking of the first and the last day of a feast. Because when the feast is over, those Sabbaths won't be reoccurring as a seventh-day Sabbath will. And that's why you're to count these seven Sabbaths. They shall be completed. They're seventh-day Sabbaths, which took place here on the 27th of March. The 28th of March was the day of the wave offering. And if you count from that, using the 28th as day one, one, two for the 29th, three for the 30th, and so on, you'll get to April 3rd, which is the seventh day in this 50-day count. It says count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. It's plain English, people. At least it should be now that I've helped you read this instead of just reading it. And hey, the whole world is deceived, you know, so... If you understand that you are to keep these feasts properly when our Father calls us to do so, this is a one-day feast, which means that if here on the 13th of March, being the new moon, you didn't count that as day one, but you waited for a crescent, you'd have started your count for the Passover, which would have brought you past the first day of the actual Feast of Unleavened Bread, it would have brought you after the actual Passover, meaning that if you didn't keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread beginning on the 27th, which was a Sabbath, and then on the 28th being the day for the wave offering, then you're at least a week off. And if you kept it in the next month, you know, then you're a month and a week off, most likely. So this is going to be an important feast, I do believe, that's coming up. Very few people are going to keep it. Probably only those on this channel of our kings is probably going to be keeping it. I don't know. I haven't heard anybody else out there speaking the correct days when our Heavenly Father had it written right in his scriptures. But then again... It's not for the whole world to know. This is information that's revealed to the chosen ones, the elect, who then reveal it to the, even the children of the earth. And those that will hear and believe are the only ones on the earth today that have a right to that tree of life. 
and may enter into that great city. Think about that. You are so special if you believe these words. And don't make your own religions and everything else to think that you're coming in with a circus parade or whatever. You're going to make it into the kingdom because of all the little rituals that you find that you think you should do. When all there is to salvation is keeping the Ten Commandments. And the only way to obtain that salvation and keep those Ten Commandments is by living by the every living word. And keeping the give or take 613 laws that apply to you. It's the schoolmaster. It's the comforter that our king promised he would send. But he's only sending it to those who qualify to obtain it. And the only way, it's like trying to get corn from a, you know, a can of beans or something. It's not going to work. We have to live by this every living word. And the way this word is prescribed to us should we live. Again, here in Amos 5.21. Consider all these people. Pray for them, you know. I pray Holy Spirit's going to be poured out soon. Who knows? Maybe it will be on this day of Pentecost that's coming. There's always a possibility. But here in Amos 5.21, it says, I hate, I despise your feast days. And I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them nor will I regard your fat and peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments. But let justice, and how do you get justice? It's by learning how to keep the Ten Commandments, by keeping the give or take 613 laws. It's the only way you could learn what justice is, and let it run down like water, and what? righteousness like a mighty stream and of course righteousness is found in where that's right deuteronomy 6 verse 25 it will be righteousness for you and me if we keep his commandments also look down here if you want to wear a star of david or something of that sort i'm going to tell you it's nothing but idol worship it says here you also carried sicketh your king and chewing your idols, the star of your gods, which you made for yourselves. So I hope if you're hoping on any of these stars, you know, the pentagrams, the star of David, or any of these other stars, you should try your best to get them out of your house. Don't be wearing them on your holy temple. You'll be inviting in demons and end up just as goofy as those lunatics. They can't figure out how to count 50 days, which will end up the day after a seventh Sabbath. So with that, I do love you all. I'm hoping our King be merciful to us all. May we come into his understanding and his blessings. And I tell you, sometimes pain, sorrows, and sufferings are exactly what our physician ordered. He works with us when we're really in pain and such. We pay more attention to his words. And that might be why those who are of the true faith are so many times hurting, ailing, you know, just praying to die, praying not to wake up the next day because of the pains, the sorrows, and the sufferings. And not just from, you know, physical pains, but also the mental pains, the wives or the husbands that are non-believers making life a dismal thing to have to wake up to the next day and i understand these things and that's why we should pray for one another you can handle it there's nothing our father through his righteous son is going to put on you that you cannot endure if you have self-control okay if you've got control of your own self your feelings and everything else to where you're coming down to where you can actually love your enemies then you're just about over the hill, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, countrymen, countrywomen. <laughs> okay, that's enough. I'm dying. I'm leaving. I love y'all. Bye.